Today, we're excited to uh, have this Genesis admin training with you all. Um, Automatic agent check is the title. Uh, before we get into that, I do want to have a couple announcements. We've got some more webinars coming up in the near future, uh, one on October 20th, and that's going to be Microsoft Teams and Ring Central integration, as well as one on October 27th on a roadmap for successful CCAS migration. Today, what we'll go over with you all today, what we will go over with you all is basically an agenda, really quick, maybe two to five minutes on who is Inflow CX in case you're not aware of who we are and this is your first interaction with us. Good to have a little bit of context. Uh, then I'll pass it over to Richard Dixon, who is on our support team, and he'll go through the, the live demo of the automatic agent check. We will have plenty of time to answer some questions at the end if you have any um, or during. Just feel free to pop those right in the chat and we'll make sure we get to them. Excellent. So you may be wondering who is Inflow CX in the first place. We are an per innovative provider of strategic advisory, deployment, and managed services for contact center, customer experience, and unified communication solution. You know, we help organizations uh, document and document current state and select the right technology. Uh, we help them execute on that technology once it's been chosen. And then we also help with the optimization of, you know, current customer engagement strategies. And, you know, our expertise spans on all things CX, UC. CCAS and within that CX space, workforce management, AI, self-service, automation, analytics, you name it. If it has to do with taking care of customers and making agents happy, we, we've got some expertise there. You know, the key thing with Inflow CX is that we're vendor agnostic. And so we provide a really neutral approach to any type of CX uh, technology evaluation, labor strategies, or you know, operational effectiveness. We've got over 75 employees uh, today. I've done a lot of CCAS installs. I've done a lot of contact center consulting engagements and, you know, got some industry accolades there. That's really just to, to show that, hey, you know, we, we are good partners with a lot of the best in the business. Uh, sampling of some of our customers, you know, what does this mean to, to folks? I always think the customer slides are, are funny because it's, hey, you know, look at us. We work with some great customers, which is true. Uh, but really what this means to you is that because we know unified communications, because we know contact center and because we know customer experience, we can apply that knowledge to a lot of different shapes and sizes of businesses, whether you're a tech, a retail, a BPO type of company. Uh, because we really only focus in, in that area that I mentioned earlier and don't stray into, you know, maybe network or security or, you know, some of these other things, uh, we take our expertise and, and apply it to a lot of different types of organizations. We partner with industry leading technology innovators and constantly, you know, evaluate new tech to address your, your needs, right? This space is very intense in the sense that I feel like every time I, I look over my shoulder or, or blink, maybe even uh, there's some new gadget or, or widget or tool that uh, is the next big thing in terms of, of contact center customer experience. And so the value of inflow is that we're at the forefront with a lot of these organizations and, you know, kind of understand where they fit into the market. And so instead of having to feel like you've got to subscribe to 10,000 newsletters and, you know, maybe get a chance to, to read one of them in between meetings or something like that. We're evaluating these organizations and have good alignment with their, their leadership, te leadership teams to, you know, see really where they fit into the overall picture of the CCAS, CX, and UCAS ecosystem. You know, we've got strategic relationships with a lot of the folks on this slide, um, and there are several other ones on here that aren't listed that are, you know, just as important to know. That's enough about Inflow. I know you guys are here for the Genesis admin training. And so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Richard Dixon to share out screen and take you all through this automatic agent check. Absolutely. So here we go. Give me a moment to get it shared out. All right. Hopefully everybody's seeing my screen. We see actions up on there currently. Uh, there is a little prep work for this. In order to build out this automatic agent check, there's a there's a couple things that we need to do. First, we need to build out an action, which I've already done in here as, as prep. But what we're going to grab here is a, a JSON that we we add to the system, and it's as simple as clicking import the action that we want to do. I've already got one built out. So I'm going to go down and show it here in just a moment. Grab the right one because I've named it a couple different things. Uh, 
this one right here. So I built out this action ahead of time. Not a whole lot of setup is involved with it. It's just a JSON. It is simply looking for the queue that we have that we're trying to evaluate against. Uh, along with that, it's going to look for the agents that are idle. So what we're looking for here is agents that are idle or not in this situation. And the reason why we're doing this is we're trying to automatically check to see if there's somebody already available. If there isn't somebody already available, then we can offer them a couple different options, whether it's going to like directly to voicemail or uh, offering them a callback. That way they don't have to sit in the queue and wait and wait and wait for somebody. They can go, there's nobody available right now. Let's give them this option. So after that, the other portion of it, it's going to give the, the member ID associated with that. So if you want to look at the JSON, it's pretty straightforward. Not a whole lot of information in either. That's essentially how it looks. And if you want to see it as a full, let me pop it up here. This is what we're doing with it. It's pretty straightforward. There's not a lot of reveal here. It's just this API call which is routing queues, looking for the input idea of that queue, are there users and the routing statuses of idle. So it's a simple check. The other part that we need to do once we get this already in here, we need to go back into admin, go to our queues, and find the ID of the queue that we are looking for. So in this case, it's gonna be an R dot. So r.sales is the first one that we're going to work with. And where to find that queue ID is going to be right up here at the very top in between queues and general. So we're going to need that ID to be able to continue further. So we're going to go back into our original thing here where we have everything built out like we did last time. So this is on the inbound call flow. Typically, in, in most situations, you would actually put this in an in queue call flow. That way, once it actually reaches the queue, that way there's no kind of interruptions in this case. However, for a little bit of a simplicity, we're going to add a few things to this one to, to kind of keep the series going in this situation. So here, we're going to go to data. We're going to click call data action. We're going to look for the pure cloud data action because that's where that action that we created earlier is. And then we're going to get what we're looking for, which is get agents idle and queue. And the value input here, we're going to want a literal and we're going to enter that value there, which is that queue ID. And then we're going to add a variable here because that's what we're going to be checking against. And this time I'm going to call it flow.agents. So I'm going to add flow.agents1. This just gives me a variable that I can choose so I can look for whether or not this will equal that true or false situation there. So in this case, where I want it to go to the queue if there are no, uh, if there are agents idle. However, if I don't want them to go to queue, then we can set it up a little bit differently. So we're going to add a few things here. So I'm going to take this, which is, has the transfer to ACD. This is where it's going to go to the agents, in this case, to this queue. So on success, well, I have to add one more switch in there. I apologize. Uh, it's going to go to success. If it, if it doesn't find it or fails or times out, I'm still going to have it go there. But on success, let me get my decision in there in just a moment. Uh, So in this case, flow.agents1 is less than zero. It'll be a yes. And that's where I want it to go to the queue, because I know that there's somebody available to be able to talk to somebody. And a no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a callback in this case. However, we're going to add something a little special here. Uh, in this case, most of the time, and this is the way I see a lot of callbacks set up, which is not ideal, 
would be that they are going off of just the the earlier thing that we have set up here, which was the the schedule check. Well, a lot of times with that schedule check, we don't want callbacks to be offered to somebody all the way up to the very end of the day because no one will be able to answer those callbacks in that situation. So we're going to shorten that. So we're going to add another group in here. So we're going to get the data look up just a minute. I wait, schedule. And then we can add another schedule in here. Depending on what we want, I'm just using this temporary one here. But in, in most cases, you would want that callback offering to be less than what your actual open and closed hours are. That way, it's not putting agents at a burden where they're trying to answer calls and they can still go on after uh, the time frame that you're open versus shortening that up to offer callbacks during a smaller window of opportunity here. That way, they actually get answered in the, the proper amount of time. So from here, now we can add our callback. I'm going to add audio in here. That way the customer knows once we get in here, sorry, we're, we're experiencing high call volumes and then offer a call back. So callback is going to need a queue. And in this case, I'm just going to use the basic script for it. Or actually, I'm going to use the default. So in this case, we'll go all the way back to the top and kind of go over everything that we've done so far in our earlier series there. So it's going to first do that that callback or that, that lookup for uh, whether or not somebody is blocked. If they are blocked, it will automatically disconnect. You continue following down. And this is where they get that, that switch choice as opposed to a menu. It's still going to be the same thing where you press one, two, three, or four. From there, it's going to do an evaluation of who chose what. So we're looking for that, that simple evaluation. Do they choose one? If they choose one, we're going to go all the way over to case one here. From here, it's going to do a schedule check to automatically see if you're open or closed. If you're open or not in a holiday or emergency, it'll then continue further down. It's going to then look at whether or not there are agents available. If there are agents available at that time, then it will transfer directly to the queue. If there are no agents available, then you can evaluate the schedule to see whether or not we want to offer a callback. If we don't want to have that callback available, then we can also offer voicemail or have it disconnect depending on what you want to do at that point. Is there any questions about this portion about automatically checking uh, for somebody to be on queue or not, or to be in an idle state to make it easier or automatically route uh, based upon that situation? And I'm not seeing any chat or, or any, any of the QA or questions. But like I said before, there is a little prep. You do have to build out and find out what queue ID that you're going to be using in order to, to cover each one of these parts. Uh, a lot of times it is done in an in queue call, but for simplicity and be able to see it all in one place, that's why we put it in that, that initial action there.
I have not seen any further questions at this time. Yep, doesn't look like it. Great, Richard. Thank you so much for the overview. Absolutely. Awesome. And yes, if any of our attendees do have any other questions or if you'd you know like more information, whether it's about Inflow CX, whether it's about Genesis, uh, please contact us. We've got some contact information right there. You can also find us on uh, our website, InflowCX.com and any social media channel. Thanks, everyone. Hope you have a great rest of your day.